giving them uh, everything they need to make their work successful. Uh, today, very good news, um, the United Nations, let me see if I could translate this back from Arabic into English. It's the Office for Policies and Strategic Planning of the UN, which is, I think, part of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. It would be something very close to that because I'm translating it back from Arabic into English. And uh, we um, signed an agreement today uh, between uh, Mr. I think he's um, from Germany, uh, Hans, is it Hans, yeah? Yeah, you your name. And uh, the, the, the Libyan government, in which they agreed on a few steps, huh? No, 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 I, I said the, the name is not um, clear here to me, I'm terribly sorry, but he is the head, he's the head of the policies and strategic planning uh, of the uh, Office for the Coordination of hum Humanitarian Affairs. So you'll be able to find his full name on the web, I'm sure. We are not very helpful, are we? Um, the agreement between the Libyan government and the UN that was signed today uh, is a very positive step. We call for more steps uh, like this. We are ready. Uh, it's not us who, has, who have to start the, uh, the first move because we are here in Tripoli. We wait for people to come. We have invited people. Only the, the Red Cross now and the UN have responded positively. Uh, their agreement is to provide um, safe passages for people to leave Musrata to provide aid, uh, food, uh, medicine, um, to call upon all parties uh, to facilitate uh, the work of the UN, uh, to make sure that civilians are protected, especially women and children, uh, to make sure that surfaces such as electricity, water, and other important surfaces are provided, uh, and to allow uh, all international humanitarian organizations to come in and uh, do their best to help with the situation. The agreement is very detailed and we signed it immediately and we are starting you know, to provide the UN with that they need to perform their duty. And this is another proof that we are doing our best once the world uh, is willing to collaborate with the Libyan government. The other thing, and of course this is an opportunity for us to renew our invitation to everyone to come and help. The other thing is, um, as we said before, we completely reject the ac accusations that continue up to t uh, uh, until today that we are using cluster bombs in Musrata. Uh, or heavy shelling of the city. Uh, we did uh, ask everyone, including the United Nations, uh, to come and judge us on the ground, a call that has been ignored again and again and again and again. We called for this when it was claimed that civilians were being killed by our army. We called for observers and fact-finding missions when it was claimed that we bombarded Tripoli and destroyed whole neighborhoods of Tripoli. We did call for observers and fact-finding missions when we were accused of using mercenaries. None of our calls was responded to positively. Again, we are accused with another crime, which is using cluster bombs against our civilian population. We find this outrageous. Uh, our religion, our culture, uh, our army, which is a regular traditional army, taught to respect human life like other traditional armies, taught to respect military rules, the rules of war, international agreements, not like the armed gangs, which belong to radical ideologies with little respect for human life. All of these factors you know, make us um, or help us not to commit such a crime. 
the Libyan army is composed, is made of Libyan tribes. It is not one tribe controlling the Libyan army. It's all Libyan tribes, and all Libyan tribes cannot kill or murder Libyan tribes. It doesn't work logically. The army would not follow orders to kill civilians because this is the army of the nation, not the army of one person. The other thing, before I allow uh, people to come in and make their statements, um, is that we believe NATO is um, going very much beyond the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1973. It's clear now to everyone, we don't even have to prove this, that NATO is supporting the rebels, is allowing them to advance against our army, is providing them with air cover. NATO knows very well about arming the rebels by the Qatari government, and NATO is allowing that. NATO, is, uh, NATO knows now, by now, about Al-Qaeda activities in Benghazi, Darna, and Al-Bayda. Uh, NATO knows now very well that Al-Qaeda fighters are advancing westbound. Uh, Al-Qaeda itself has admitted many times that it lost fighters uh, in Libya. Al-Zawahiri, you all know Al-Zawahiri, the second man in Al-Qaeda, made a recording, I'm not sure how many of you uh, are aware of this, in which he talked about jihad in Libya, and he said that Al-Qaeda fighters are at the forefront of fighting Gaddafi in Libya. This is the second man, only second to Bin Laden. And he said Al-Qaeda is at the forefront of fighting Gaddafi in Libya. And he said, of course, we should never forget that our enemy is not only Gaddafi, but also the Crusader armies of the West. So for him, it's a question of finishing Gaddafi and then turning his back to fight the West, just like they did in Russia when they fought the Russians or the Soviet Union, and then they turned their back to fight the Americans. Um, We are the legitimate government of this country. In all, in international law, you cannot take up arms against the government of a country. This is regardless of the political system implemented in this country. The international law does not say if your political system is such and such, you can take up arms and fight. International law says you cannot take up arms. If you do, you are an armed rebellion. The government has the right to fight back. We find it very strange and unacceptable that uh, um, the NATO countries choose to ignore this. They are fighting against the legitimate country, uh, government of this country. We did accept the African Union roadmap. We challenged both. We challenged both the coalition governments and the rebels to come to the negotiation table. We challenged both to accept the African Union roadmap because we said we know if, Libyan, if the Libyan people are free to choose, the rebels will lose and NATO will lose. They know that. And we said we challenge you Come, do not have preconditions, because preconditions indicate agendas, indicates that you do not want Libyans to decide for themselves. You want to decide for Libyans. Sit down, let's talk, agree on the terms of elections, referendum, any political process, and let us, let us see who the Libyan people choose and what kind of political system they elect. And we are sure the Libyan nation are at this very moment rallying behind the leadership of this country. They can see very well that Libya uh, is pushed the Iraqi way towards being a second Iraq, a second Somalia. 
and even those who would like to have changes in the political system or reforms or they would like to do it and they are sure now that they want to do it from within peacefully and without military intervention. The talk about Masrata continues of course, the lies and misinformation by the rebels and many international organizations that do not bother to come to Libya continue. Uh, we are uh, outraged by these organizations that do not respond positively to our calls for them to come to Tripoli, establish their offices, and go to Musrata and report from the ground. And instead, they listen to phone calls and reports by the rebel fighters and regard them as facts. We are outraged by this misinformation. We know it's a plan, a very well-coordinated plan by many parties to have control over Masrata.